D is asking, the Guardian reported that, quote, since 2020, Belarusian authorities have abolished or simplified visa requirements for 76 countries. Among them are many affected by serious conflicts, such as Syria, Libya, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Travel agencies in Syria, Iraq, and Turkey started selling trips to Belarus, in which they offer housing and employment in an EU country. Uh, officials in many European Union countries are convinced that Russia is behind the migration crisis. If true, how does Russia gain from it? Um, so, so Belarus is basically using people as a weapon. Uh, we're both kind of like, yeah, as like this is like, and, uh, if that doesn't convince you that these people are evil, like, but uh, I don't know what else. Like, we are th gonna throw desperate people including children at the borders of poland as a way because eventually they're going to end up in western europe and especially germany because because of why because of revenge like imagine be like i am i'm a dictator you're putting sanctions on me because of my human rights violations as an and as a way for me to re get revenge out, out of your europe i'm gonna literally throw people at you i'm gonna literally throw desperate people at your borders just to like like just to just to like, overwhelm as, you as a, just to overwhelm you like using the most desperate the the most miserable like, people that are in the most hard situation using individuals as a weapon against uh, Western Europe, like how evil I, do you have to be? But you, let me. I think we should give them. a little context. So, can I quickly say like my understanding? Yeah, I mean the con the the context was given in the question, but yeah, go on. Okay, so my understanding is that Belarus is acting this way because sanctions were were put on them um, after they forcibly grounded a plane to arrest a journalist that happened to be flying over their airspace. That including other things like the sanctions and also were how added. sketchy yeah. their recent just, presidential election was and how they've been just, brutalizing their citizens over protests. Right. So the EU sanctioned paper. them and then yeah. they started doing this, including people who are flying into Minsk and then being transported over to the border as a way right. to basically get revenge on the EU. But then how do you think right. um, Russia plays into this? Yeah, so I my wanted to answer is the Belarus question. Belarus is like a pariah except for their relationship with Russia. Okay, Belarus. Okay, let me answer the question. Belarus is like was using, um, wanting to like appeal to both Russia and, um, you know, EU as a way to get points from each, like put them against each other. This is sometimes like a lot of tyrants do that, like, you know, they're, they're, well, not just China, as many countries like during the Cold War, this was like a, such a standard tactic. Like, you were like, Am I in the side of the United States or is the Soviet Union? I mean, I don't know. What do you guys like? What do you guys have to offer? Right? So, in the modern days, Belarus was doing the same thing, like with playing the EU against Russia to just get points from each one of them. But ever since their human rights violations and their like anti democratic methods have gone through the roof, then Belarus was like, Okay, I'm getting closer, closer to. Russia eventually, like, like it's now completely on the side of Russia, and Belarus and Russia are like now complete allies uh, against uh, the rest of Europe. Um, so the question is, why is Russia defending Belarus? Because well, because they're they be buddy buddies now, right? They're like ex like they are very, and actually Belarus doesn't have anybody other than Russia. Like they're not, they're they're an international pariah right now. That's the only ally that they have, right? So, and also Russia, um, so Belarus is like this tiny player that is like making, make, causing a lot, a lot of headache for the, for the EU, but Russia is a much bigger player that loves ca causing headache for, for the EU. Um, and if Belarus is, is now the tool, uh, the proxy that it gets to use to intimidate EU, it's going to use it. It's going to use it. While at the same time, like, like you know, loosening the leash sometimes and pulling it a little bit, like recently Russia came out and said like, oh, I didn't approve of that. How come they did that without talking to me, right? You know what I mean? Like sometimes like it's a back and forth, but it is like a Belarus is kind of like a dog on a leash for Putin to like unleash on, you know, right now at least to use it as ways to, you know, when it comes to like, you know, international politics, sometimes when you see like somebody, a country, um, competitors 
um, I, you know, causing headache for each other. It's also to show that I can do this to you. You need to appease me. You need to give me points. Like, what do you have to offer for me to stop doing this? Right. So that's why that's how Russia will play into this. Right. You know, and it's working very well for Russia because Russia doesn't have to do something directly so that you can't condemn Russia directly. It was Belarus, it's not Russia, right? So using proxies is a very effective way of causing headache uh, for your enemies without like, with uh, what is it called when you when you could deny that you're doing something? Plausible deniability, right? Exactly. So that's the answer. Um, D, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, D is saying I I, people I think... were lied to and are now being pushed into Poland who are demonizing them. This whole situation is horrible. Yes, people are dying of mm. the cold in the forests on the border because of this. Yeah. It's and horrible. this could escalate, guys, this could really escalate. Like this could turn to tensions between Poland uh, and Belarus. By the way, one one silver lining is that Poland's reliance on the EU is becoming more and more highlighted. So that's a that's like at least a, like a, a somewhat of a good thing, right? Which is interesting um, because they've been making moves like they're going to try to break away. Not, yeah, Poland and Hungary like... are being real sketchy with their EU commitments. Yeah, but this is good a reminder to Poland that you 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 need the EU against threats like Belarus mm -hmm. and Russia. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder Armin Avabi blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.